So Nigel, is branding important for small businesses? Branding is uh, very important for small businesses, Graham. Um, uh, a brand is simply a promise. You're holding out a promise to the marketplace in terms of what you say you can deliver. Um, and you have two options, I think, as a small business. You can either go with your own name, uh, if you're a solo professional, uh, or like in Verbatim's case, you can come up with a separate brand name and put that out as a message. Uh, the idea is for people, obviously, to uh, remember the, uh, the name. Uh, interestingly, branding, though, uh, many people think it's a logo or a business card or whatever. And really, uh, I think a brand is all about your identity. Um, so in Verbatim's case, for example, that would be the way you treat your staff. It would be the way that they um, uh, turned up when you had those snow uh, challenge challenges in uh, January. Um, it's the way you think and feel about things. Um, it's very important branding. It's something that we should think about as a mission to build a brand uh, uh, as we want to expand our business over time. And should a small business have a marketing plan? Well, the answer is absolutely definitely yes. A business should have a plan. Uh, but only a few pages. It should be a concise plan. It should begin with objectives and run through market segmentation, positioning, uh, differentiation, key messages, the promotional mix, and end with a uh, measurement in terms of what you want the plan to deliver. Uh, I think it was Eisenhower that said that plans per se are fundamentally a waste of time, but planning is absolutely crucial. And um, what are the key elements of a marketing plan? Well, the key elements uh, really would begin uh, with what you want that plan to uh, do for the business. So it may be that you uh, turn over £100,000 now, and over the next 12 months you want to turn over £150,000. So it makes you think through uh, what the business wants to, wants, wants to do over that period of time. And um, Tell me, what is market segmentation and why is it so important? Okay, a very good question. Uh, a market segment is a group of people with shared needs. Now, if you're marketing to consumers, that would be age, socioeconomic group, gender, and geographical location. If you're marketing to businesses, that would include the type of business, uh, the decision maker, uh, job title, uh, and the particular need that that job title has and the issues that surround that particular person. Uh, if you think in terms of segments, I think in terms of circles. So you might have circle A, B, C and D. And the issue here is we can put messages together for those particular circles or groups of people with shared needs, which therefore makes our marketing so much more effective, Graham. And what is a customer timeline, please? Okay, customer timelines work like this. That behind us are dormant clients. Now these are people that we sold to in the past, or perhaps we've quoted to in the past. Uh, we're not currently selling to them. Our job is to get all of this information into one place, into a marketing database, so that we can communicate with these people on a consistent basis. And clearly, if they're dormant, our job is to wake them up again. Now, one way to do that is via an offer. So we can send out an offer to a group of dormant clients and say, would you like to come back into the fold because we've got a very special offer for you here in the spring. With regards to current clients, that's really all about two things. The first thing is making sure that you bind them to your chest with hoops of steel, to paraphrase Shakespeare. And the second thing with current clients is to try and generate referrals out of that uh, group. Uh, in the future, that's about prospective business relationships. So in another of our films uh, together, we'll be talking about the promotional mix and these future people where you're trying to build relationships. Of course, one of the key things for a business person is to know how much one should spend on marketing. Well, here's the rub. Uh, with small businesses, of course, they don't really have budgets. So I would say that to begin with, you ought to think in terms of trying to spend nothing, Graham. And the answer is, therefore, to focus on the free promotional techniques. Uh, can I give you a couple of examples? DIY PR, where you write and send out your own press releases to your own media list uh, from your own machine. 
effectively you're not spending any money doing that, you could learn a little bit more about search engine optimization. And as long as you can change your own website, perhaps using a content management system, that's something you could do uh, yourself. Now you could organize some talks, and again, that really wouldn't uh, cost any money, uh, I would say. So I would focus on the free stuff. But if you're going to have to spend some money, I would spend it on things like uh, the design for your website, and maybe printing good quality uh, business cards, and perhaps printing a few postcards that I think you uh, are fully aware that I, I like so much. And how much time should I spend on marketing? How much time should you spend on marketing? Well, if you were working on your own, or if you were the only person doing the marketing in your organisation, uh, given that there are 22 uh, days in the average business month, I would say actually up to seven days a month on the marketing, which is a heck of a lot of time, really. Uh, now, that's going to give you two-thirds of your time to service clients and do all the, all the other things that you've got to do in a small business. Uh, but marketing is certainly time-intensive, isn't it? So what I mean by that is writing things, going out there networking, uh, working on your website and learning things. And if you're doing that, it would be a very good investment in your own business.